Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Israel apologizing for an airstrike that killed seven international aid workers in Gaza, saying Israel is at war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. And Iran promising retaliation for the death of a top general after a strike apparently by Israel. But Israel says any attack will be met with a strong response. The biggest earthquake in nearly a quarter of a century strikes Taiwan during rush hour, leaving several people dead and destroying buildings and roads. We're going to bring you a look at the damage. And on the lighter side, a new situation comedy that backs news with Roma Downey about the ups and downs of a family who prays together. All those stories and more ahead today right here on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. Lots to get to. Let's begin this half hour in Israel where the government is apologizing for a mistaken airstrike that killed seven international aid workers in Gaza Tuesday. The Israeli Defense Forces say they are thoroughly investigating the incident. At the same time, Iran is threatening retaliation against Israel for a strike that killed one of its top military leaders. But Israel's defense minister warns anyone who hits the Jewish state will pay a heavy price. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell brings us the story. He's reporting from Jerusalem. This morning, the IDF chief of staff addressed the tragedy that took the lives of a team of international workers from World Central Kitchen as they returned from an aid delivery in Gaza. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at a war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu personally spoke with some of the leaders of the countries the victims were from. This happens in war. We're checking this thoroughly. We're in touch with the governments, and we will do everything for this not to happen again. In the U.S., the White House is expressing outrage over how dangerous it is for aid workers in Gaza. More than 200 aid workers have been killed in this conflict, making it one of the worst for aid workers in recent history. This incident is emblematic of a larger problem and evidence of why distribution of aid in Gaza has been so challenging. Meanwhile, the Israeli military continues to prepare for its controversial invasion of Rafah, Hamas's last stronghold, but also temporary home to more than a million Gazan refugees. While the Biden administration opposes the invasion, former Vice President Mike Pence says it's a necessity. Israel has no choice but to invade Rafah and hunt down and destroy Hamas once and for all. Rather than criticize Israel, Pence said Americans should fully support its war efforts against enemies sworn to wipe it off the map. If the Palestinians laid down their weapons right now and released all hostages, we'd have peace. But if Israelis laid down their weapons, we'd have no Israel. On another front, Israel is bracing for Iran retaliating after a top Iranian general and his aide were killed by a missile strike in Syria that's being blamed on Israelis. But Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant warns whoever hits Israel will pay a heavy price. We operate everywhere, every day, in order to prevent our enemies from gaining strength and in order to make it clear to anyone who acts against us all over the Middle East that the price for action against Israel will be a heavy one. And continue our coverage now with Chris Mitchell joining us from Jerusalem. So, Chris, let's begin with the aid convoy that's making headlines. Uh, what can Israel do to make things safe for aid workers? Well, Ephraim, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, they're li living in a war zone and trying to help people in a war zone. And uh, uh, tragically, even in the best of intentions, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, the U.S. has had a number of incidents of its own in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. For example, 2021, they, uh, they hit an aid worker's family in Afghanistan. 2015, uh, another airstrike uh, killed 14, uh, 42 people in a hospital in Kunduz. Uh, it's not to excuse what happened uh, with uh, Israel, but tragic incidents like this happen in wartime. Uh, the IDF says it's going to do a complete investigation and make the necessary changes. And this is all complicated by the distribution of uh, humanitarian aid uh, into, uh, into Gaza. And uh, we'll see how this unfolds in the days and weeks to come. 
Israel is still planning to go ahead with an invasion of the last Hamas stronghold in Rafah, but a report out of Israel says the U.S. is deeply skeptical about Israeli plans to evacuate some civilians from Gaza. Where do those plans stand? Well, I think they're kind of in limbo right now, uh, Ephraim. There was a meeting, a virtual meeting on Monday between uh, U.S. and Israeli officials, and that would include uh, Secretary of State Blinken and also Ron Dermer. He's the uh, strategic affairs minister here in Israel. Uh, they were discussing that whole idea of a ground operation into Rafah. And uh, reportedly, Channel 12 here in Israel is saying there were a lot of tensions there during that meeting, uh, and, and Washington is very skeptical over the Israeli plans to operate in, uh, in which is the southernmost Gazan city. Uh, it was a two-hour call, and, uh, and so we see it really means to, uh, to be seen how this is going to unfold. Uh, it was described as a difficult meeting, and uh, it seems like Israel and the United States are really on completely different pages uh, when it comes to this planned operation in Rafah. And as we've reported for weeks now, Jerusalem says four Hamas battalions remain remain there, and they can't win the war against Hamas unless they actually uh, defeat uh, Hamas there in, uh, in Rafa. Let's turn now to the Israeli strike that reportedly took out a leading Iranian general Monday. Are there concerns of a possible escalation uh, by Iran's proxy, Hezbollah, against Israel? Definitely, uh, Ephraim. I mean, uh, they're on high alert right now on the northern border. Uh, it remains to be seen exactly how Iran will retaliate and where they retaliate. They say they're going to do it, but they, they haven't given any idea of exactly where or when. But uh, there is a lot of tension up on the north. Uh, there is a sense that there will be uh, a large-scale war on the northern border, and, uh, and perhaps there'll be some sort of retaliation by Iran in the meantime. I mean, people are talking about a war maybe in uh, May, possibly June. Uh, but definitely people are anticipating some sort of retaliation uh, by Iran after the strike. This was really, uh, a, a, you know, a, a escalation in terms of Israel striking directly at Iranian leaders. Usually it's been striking proxy groups, whether it's the Houthis, Hamas, or Hezbollah. But this is striking directly against uh, Iranian leaders and uh, a really escalation in, uh, in the whole battle between Iran and Israel. Speaking of escalation, there have been growing protests in Israel over the hostages and against the Netanyahu government. Where is this going? Is there concern it could rise uh, to political violence? They're very much so. There's a lot of uh, concern about political violence. Even just a few weeks, a few blocks from here, Ephraim, last night, there was, uh, you know, a mini riot, I guess, against the uh, right outside the prime minister's residence. There is a sense uh, that really this, uh, after the few days ago, when there was a major rally outside uh, the prime minister's uh, office, and many people are actually, uh, you know, launching uh, this camping out there, that political violence could be a very, very likely scenario. That's why people need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem and peace in this city right now. The Palestinian Authority is launching another bid to become a member state at the United Nations. The U.S. is expected to block it. Why? And could the Biden administration just unilaterally recognize a Palestinian state? Well, they could, and the, the reason for uh, the, the Washington has a longstanding policy that uh, U.N. membership will only come as a result of a negotiated bilateral agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. The U.S. is saying the position has not changed, but actually in February there was a, a report that maybe the Biden administration might reconsider, and so that would be a big concern over here uh, for the Palestinian Authority to get, uh, a, you know, state status in the U.N. Uh, nine of the 15 council members of the U.N. Security Council would have to approve that, as well as two-thirds of the General Assembly. Uh, but it would be expected that the United States would veto any kind of attempt by the Palestinian Authority uh, to become a state. The founder of Palestinian Media Watch writes that a revitalized Palestinian Authority includes supporters of terrorism. What can you tell us about that? Well, you know, it, they call it revitalized, but actually the new minister of women's affairs, she supports terrorists. She glorified and honor a lady named Dala Dalal Mugrabi, who's responsible for the worst 
uh, terror attack against Israel before October 7th. 37 Israelis were murdered there. Uh, it also includes this revitalized PA government, the religious leader, and he openly called for terrorism in a sermon uh, during the Second Intifada. More than 1,100 Israelis were murdered during that time. So if you look at the members of the new revitalized Palestinian Authority, it really doesn't look revitalized, but the, simp uh, the same old Palestinian Authority. Mm. Chris Mitchell from Jerusalem, thanks as always for your insights. Stay safe and know that many people are praying for you and our entire team there in Israel. Coming up, the strongest earthquake in nearly 25 years. It's hit to Taiwan, a magnitude 7.4. It happened during rush hour in the morning, followed by a series of aftershocks. We're going to let you know how many people have died and bring you a look at the damage when we come back. You're watching CBN News Watch. We're back now with the strongest earthquake in Taiwan in nearly a quarter of a century. It's left at least nine people dead with several hundred reportedly injured. The U.S. measured the quake at magnitude 7.4, while Taiwan registered it as a 7.2. The damage to buildings along with roads and tunnels can be seen, and it's created landslides. CBN's Dale Hurd is on this story. The 7.4 magnitude quake rocked the island during the morning rush hour Wednesday, damaging buildings and highways. The quake's epicenter was offshore, some six hours from the capital of Taipei, near Huayan County, where a five-story building was left leaning at a 45-degree angle with its first floor collapsed. Residents had to be helped out of windows. Vivian Chow is a reporter based in Taipei. I was in the office at that time and people were holding on to the doors because everything was falling off and we wanted to get to the doorways in, in case every, so, something collapsed. Television images showed neighbors and rescuers lifting residents including a toddler through windows and onto the street. All appeared to be in shock but without serious injuries. The Taiwan government says 736 people were injured and 77 stranded. The quake and aftershocks also caused 24 landslides and damage to 35 roads, bridges and tunnels. A lot of firefighters are assembling search and rescue teams to help out the more severely damaged places. The earthquake triggered a tsunami warning for Japan that was later lifted. The damage in the capital Taipei was much less, with buildings swaying and some losing tiles. We have already experienced a lot of aftershocks. Um, Within like one and a half hours after the initial earthquake, there were 39 aftershocks recorded. Earthquakes are a common occurrence in Taiwan, and authorities said they had expected a relatively mild quake of magnitude 4 and did not send out alerts. But the shaking from this quake was strong enough to scare citizens across the island. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Switching gears when we come back, a new series on Amazon Prime with Roma Downey and more. It is a situation comedy about dealing with the ups and downs of life and praying through it all. We're going to bring you a look at it when we come back. Stay with us. There's a new series you may want to spend a little time watching with, a f with your family. The Baxters focuses on family, a family that is maneuvering the highs and lows of life. And during the good times and the bad times, they are still praying. One, two, three. Baxters! So, Roma, why this as a series? What, what made you want to do this? Well, I was first introduced to the Karen Kingsbury best-selling book series. I mm. couldn't put it down. I'm a little worried about Carrie and Tim. They don't look at each other the same way anymore. Mm. So I'm reading the Baxters and I'm thinking, this could be like touched by an angel because mm. while it's not dealing with angels, it is dealing with a 
family of faith and a family who have many challenges, but things in life that bring them to their knees. But this family, unlike other families, when they are brought to their knees, they pray. Something's bothering you. I have been struggling. Carrie. I reached out to Karen Kings where I said, Karen, would you ever consider allowing me the rights to option your book, to bring it to TV? And she said, you don't know, this is an answer to a prayer. I love that prayer is such um, a large character in this production, know, if you honestly, will. And it makes you realize how rarely we see people of faith in TV shows. How rarely we get to see a church-going family, a God-honoring family, taking the time in a moment of crisis to say, let's stop and pray for our daughter. Let's pray for our son. And then they pray, and they pray in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we, we come to you tonight with hearts filled with concern and expectation. One of the things I like about it is it shows that people of faith are still very much flawed. It's just how we work out those flaws. That's right, that's right. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I think people hear a faith show and they go, oh, a lot of goody two-shoes. <laughs> yeah. goody things. I have built my whole world around you. Tim is in love with another woman. I keep going over it in my mind and I have no idea how we got to this point. But I loved stepping into this cast. I have a lovely young ensemble cast. Um, but Kathy Lee Gifford did me a solid favor and stepped into the guest starring role for me. Her daughter, Cassidy Gifford, is also a character in the show. I get you made a commitment to Tim. You don't know anything about commitment. You can't commit to anything. What's it like to work together on a project? It's so fun. It, <laughs> although we didn't do scenes together, yeah. actually. <laughs> we have many times in the past, but on this particular project, we didn't, although I'd love, love to in the future. Yeah. Uh, but we had fun. We always loved being on a set together. I got to watch a few episodes really moved already. Your roles and why you wanted to do it. So I play Reagan Decker. I moved from New York to Indiana um, and I become friends with the Baxter family um, through church. And I start working, um, actually get offered a job at Carrie, the eldest Baxter's daughter's interior design studio. And then she ends up setting me up with Luke, her younger brother. And that is sort of how I get Spark ingratiated fly. into the Baxter. <laughs> Both of my scenes are with, um, in the two different episodes are with, with the uh, with Roma, and I'm, she's such a fine and instinctive actress. And uh, so uh, I just, I'm an old friend that comes back to town, let's put it that way. It fills our hearts to know that we can be here for you. I wanted to be a part of this project, I think, because I really do think people are very, very hungry for something good right now. You know, it's so important to come home to something and they come home to God instead of the actual just mm -hmm. physical home. That's a good um, way to put it, and it's really true. I hope that it just blesses people and meets them and wherever they are in terms, if they're lonely or mm -hmm. wherever it is, and mm -hmm. it does give them hope. Hope is real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Cass, and I just hope that it could inspire them uh, to get closer to God. You cannot move beyond this guilt until you find the courage to allow yourself to just feel. Roma and Karen together um, producing the show. Obviously, Karen wrote the material and she's incredible. Um, but them going off of each other back and forth, they really made something special. They're powerful in the Holy Spirit and they're powerful in their knowledge of, of the word mm -hmm. and they're powerful about their purpose. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know I'm only a phone call away, right? A show like The Baxters is a reminder that there's, you know, as well as our families, there's the bigger community, the community of church, community of believers, community, you know, of people to look out for each other. And, you know, it is my hope that when your family is gathered together for Easter this year, that mm. you curl up on the couch together. It's all you have to do, turn the TV on and enjoy the Baxter series together. Forgiveness happens once. Healing takes a lifetime. You're my sister. You have always been there for me. I'm still scared. But you're not alone. We're your family. 
We've already binge season one in the middle of season two. The new series, The Baxter, is now available on Prime streaming platform. Be sure to join us tonight for a Studio 5 special. We're getting an exclusive look at the stage adaptation of C.S. Lewis's Prince Caspian. I traveled to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. to sit down with the cast and the crew and to get a behind-the-scenes look at how the massive puppets come to life. Now, you can watch Studio 5 tonight on the CBN News Channel. It begins at 8 Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app, or you can watch it on YouTube. We are back with an encouraging word for your Wednesday. Stay with us. Back with your Wednesday word, and today's word is work. Remember this, faith alone isn't faith. You must act on what you believe and move like it's true. Faith without work is dead, and that is no faith at all. Remember this, and with that word, I encourage you to make this a wonderful Wednesday and walk in faith intentionally. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. You can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online at cbnnews.com. Take a moment. Let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. Then come on back. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.